Let's try the following example. Calcium is essential to tree growth. In 1990, the concentration of calcium and precipitation in Chautauqua, New York, was 0.11 mg per liter. A random sample of 10 precipitation dates in 2014 results in the following data. This represents precipitation for each of those randomly selected 10 days. A normal probability plot suggests that data could come from a population that is normally distributed. A box plot does not show any outliers. Does the sample evidence suggest that the calcium concentrations have changed since 1990? Use the alpha equals 0.05 level of significance. So we're going to use this sample to test where the calcium concentration have changed since 1990. So we're conducting hypothesis testing. Now what is the parameter here? In this example, we're dealing with population mean, so the average uh, concentration of calcium and precipitation in that city in 990 is 0.11 milligram per liter. To conduct hypothesis testing for population mean, first we have to verify the following conditions. Um, the sample has to be obtained by simple random sampling or the data result from a randomized experiment. Um, here it says that the random sample of 10 dates, right? So we know that this first condition is satisfied. And the second one is that the sample should not have any outliers and the population from which the sample is drawn should be normally distributed or the sample size and should be large which is greater than 30. Well, that's not our case, right? Our sample size is only 10. But from the description of the problem, we can see that this condition is actually, or those two conditions are satisfied. It says that normal probability plot suggests that data could come from a population that is normally distributed, and the box plot does not show any outliers. So yeah, those two conditions are satisfied. We can move on. The first step is to state the null and alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the one that states the certain value of the population mean. And that's what's given to us in this sentence. So population mean is 0.11 milligrams per liter. And then the null hypothesis is the one that states that um, that value has changed somehow. A lot of times it says that it has decreased or increased. So what do we have in our example? Well, in our example, the question is, does the sample evidence suggest that the calcium concentrations have changed since 1990? See how it doesn't say has have increased or have decreased, it just says have changed. So it can be either or. Um, so in other words, it's just different. In this case, the alternate hypothesis is formed like that population mean is not equal to that number. So it's changed. So it means that it's not equal to that 0.11 milligram per liter anymore. And that's going to be our hypothesis structure. So it's two-tailed hypothesis structure. To compute p-value, we're going to use calculator. So on the calculator, we have to press stat, then move to tests, and then select test number two. So for population mean hypothesis test, we use that second second test. Um, let's see how we'll need to input data into the calculator. One option is to input raw data. Um, the other option is to enter sample statistics. So that means that we'll need to know sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Well, we don't have that. We could calculate sample mean and sample standard deviation, but it's going to be just an extra step since we have an option of entering raw data. That's what we'll do since this is how a sample is provided to us. So I'm going to choose data, press enter, and this is what we see next. So mu naught, that's population mean from the null hypothesis, is 0.11, right? 
from the null hypothesis, point 11. And next, calculator is asking where it should look for the data. Well, here it says L1, list 1. Well, I actually haven't entered the data yet. So I'll go ahead and enter the data right now. So I need to press STAT again. Um, I'm staying here in edit, line number one added, press enter, and that's where I will enter my sample. Okay, in L1, I already have some information from some other example. So I will highlight L1, go up to highlight L1. I'll press clear, enter, and that will clear the list. So clear right here. Now I'm ready to enter the values from my sample. I enter the data and I'm ready to go back to the test. So stat tests number two, t-test. Okay, yes, now the data is in list one. Um, skip frequency, we don't have to change anything here. And what is the hypothesis structure? Mu equals, well, let's look at um, H1, the alternate hypo hypothesis. It says mu is not equal to the number stated in the null hypothesis. So it means that we have to choose this option. Mu is not equal mu naught from that number, right? So it's really highlighted. I'm pressing enter. So it stays highlighted. And then I'll go down to calculate and press enter. Okay. So from here, I can see that the p-value is 0.12. value point 12. Do we reject or not reject the null hypothesis based on the found p-value? Let's write that down. So p-value is point 12. To determine or to answer this question, we have to compare that to the provided level of significance, which is point 0.05 for our example. That is alpha level of significance. And the sign that we have to use between them is the greater sign. Since sign is greater, since the p-value is greater than alpha level of significance, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Do not reject the null hypothesis. And that means that we didn't find sufficient evidence to support the claim that the calcium concentration have changed since so here's the interpretation of the result. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that calcium concentration have changed since 1990.